if we have a function y as a function of x and w, but we also have a second condition where x itself is a function of w. And our objective is to find the derivative of y. So how would we define the derivative or the rate of change of y here? To understand the process on getting the derivative of y, let us build a channel map to define the relation between the variables of y, x, and w. If we depict the relation among the variable as a channel, it would show as follow. We can see here that y is actually the function of w only. So if our objective is to find the rate of change in y, then we would be looking for the rate of change of y from the change in w. So we are looking for the total derivative, where in the next I will show you how we derive y with respect to x and w. Referring to the channel map we made, we try to see the relationship between y and its independent variable x and w. And if we want to find the rate of change in y or the total derivative of y, there are two sources to derive y, directly through the function of f shown by this channel and indirectly via the function of g and f shown by this two arrow. And we can also combine the two functions into a composite function as follow. So, to get the dy per dw, what we do is conduct a partial derivative for each variable. The first one, partial derivative of y with respect to x, do y per do x. But since x itself is a function of w, we derive x and have dx per dw. And the second is the partial derivative of y with respect to w, do y per do w. So this is the final result uh, of the total derivative or the rate of change of y. Um, but we can also obtain it by differentiating the function totally or conducting a total differential through this, uh, this is a total differential, dy equals to fx dx plus fw dw. And we divide this, the both side with dw, and obtain this form. And uh, since this is a partial derivative, it is actually do y per do x and this is do y per dw. Since dw per dw is equal to 1, this is the final result from the total differential, the total derivative of dy per dw. And this form is just equal to the first uh, result of our total derivative. So this is how you conduct a total derivative. Let's try to find the total derivative from this example here. z equals to 7u plus vt, where u itself e equals to 2t squared and v equals to t plus 1. Here, we can say that we have z as a function of u, v, and t, where but u and v are both a function of t. If we draw it as a channel map, it is shown as follow, we have t indirectly affect the change in z through u and v, and t directly affect the change on z. Thus, we can also write z as a composite function as follow. From this composite function, we know that we want to find the derivative of uh, dz, the total derivative of z that is dz per dt. Uh, to get it, we we do it as follow, do z per do u plus du per dt plus do z per dv times dv per dt plus do z per dt times dt per 
eight. So on uh, this, we try to find dz per do z per do u. From here, do z per do u is just seven, and then do u per dt is four t plus do z per do v is just t. Dv per dt is one, and dz per dt. Do z per do t, I mean, is v. And dt plus dt is just equal to 1. I didn't write it here. Um, so the final result is, this is you have 28t plus t plus v. Or dz per dt is just 29t plus v. This result, you can also obtain by um, inserting a uh, resulting this from this composite function. So you just insert this 2t square to u and uh, t plus 1 here to the v. Uh, and if you uh, make it simpler, yeah, you will get uh, the same result. Or we can say that this uh, total derivative is another alternative um, beside inserting this u and v into this equation, uh, you still have a separate function or you still have a system equation and do the total derivative uh, based on the process that we have learned here.